one of these three men has a record never before duplicated in the boxing profession. What is your name, please? My name is Lamar Clark. What is your name, please? My name is Lamar Clark. What is your name, please? My name is Lamar Clark. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Lamar Clark and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Now, here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much and welcome once again to Tell the Truth. What is your name, please? My name is Polly Bergen. My name is Jackie Cooper. My name is Kitty Carlisle. And my name is Hy Gardner. Now, these three gentlemen all claim to be Lamar Clark, as you heard. Only one, of course, is the real Lamar Clark. The other two merely have assumed his identity, and they are the ones who do not have to stick to the truth. Panel, if you will, please follow along with your copies of this affidavit as I read it. I, Lamar Clark, work on a mink ranch. When not involved with the care and feeding of mink, I am a professional boxer. I have won all of my 27 professional fights. 26 by knockout, and one by decision. I recently received nationwide attention because I won three different fights in the same ring in one night. I knocked out each of my opponents. Signed, Lamar Clark. All right, panel, these three gentlemen you heard them say all claim to be Lamar Clark, professional boxer and mink racer. Only the real Lamar Clark, however, must answer your questions truthfully. Uh, you will each question as you all ordinarily do until you hear this signal. And at the end of the questioning period, you'll be asked to cast your vote for the one who, in your opinion, is the real Lamar Clark. And we'll begin tonight with Polly Bergen. Polly? Thank you, Bud. Uh, number one, it says here that you care for me. Uh, and who doesn't? Uh, could, could you tell me, what do you feed me? Mink are fed in a mixture of bran, horse meat, and fish. I see. Number two... Uh, how large is, is a, a full-grown mink? Oh, about 18 inches. And weighs from three to eight pounds. That's a big one, eight, eight pounds. Uh, number three, starting off with two minks, how long would it take to raise a full-length mink coat? Uh, it'll take seven months uh, to raise a mink or to... Uh, it takes know, seven months to do what? For a mink to be uh, ready to be pelted. Uh-huh. So... <laughs> I'm not very good at mathematics, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and number one, um, what, um, do, do they dye minks to get all those fabulous colors, or are they born that way? Well, they're, they're born that way. They mix breed them. They have a, uh, all, uh... You mink, mean they mix they... a black and a white to get a gray? And that's no, no, they don't. <laughs> that's a different animal. Jackie probably. Cooper. That's the way they do with paint. <laughs> <laughs> um... Number one, uh, you're a boxer, and, uh, and you raise mink. Uh, that's very funny. I once knew a fellow mm. named Mink, and he was a boxer. <laughs> uh, what, what weight gloves are now used in uh, pro boxing? Well, uh, eight and sixes. Uh, number three, uh, I understand minks are very mean animals. Is that true? Yes, it is. Uh-huh. They, they sound more dangerous than some of your opponents in boxing. <laughs> uh, number, uh, number two, how many decisions did you win? One decision. One decision. Number... Kitty? Number one, most um, fighters have names like Killer, uh, Tiger, Hurricane. Um, what do they call you? Just Lamar Clark. <laughs> I don't have any nicknames. Not very scary, are you? No. <laughs> Number two, uh, we didn't clear that point up of Polly's about mutations with mink. How, what would you cross to get a white mink? Well, I think I would cross a sapphire with a black. A sapphire with a black. And then pray for a cold winter. <laughs> how much does a white mink, how much does a white mink cost, Number three? Uh, oh, I'd say anywhere. You mean the pelt or the... The pelt. Anywhere from $5,000.
One white pelt? <laughs> Depends on where you're shopping, girl. Oh, holy uh, My gardener, please. Now, Mr. Ray, in what, in what state uh, is it legal to take on three different fighters the same night? What state? Mm hmm Ohio. Ohio. Yes. Uh, number one, uh, who did you fight uh, in one night, uh, three at a time? The Ritz Brothers or something? <laughs> I mean, this is, a, this is not unusual. Did they run out of fighters? No, they had an uh, opponent, a scheduled opponent, and then uh, I knocked him out, and then the other guy's opponent didn't show up, so I fought him and knocked him out. And then that guy's opponent showed up, so I took him on. And knocked him. <laughs> Number one, who is the... I'm sorry, but it's time to vote, battle. <laughs> had a good time to stop on that note. Without consultation, would you please mark your ballots and select number one. Number two. Or number three. Remember, the team of challenges will get $250 for every incorrect vote. Okay, panel, have you all voted? March your ballot. All right, Polly, for whom did you vote? Well, I'm positive it's number one, but I voted for number two because uh, uh, number one uh, looks the least like a prize fighter, so I figured that he is. And number two looks the most like one, so he probably isn't, but I voted for him. <laughs> no, really, because you always do that. You know, you always sneak around. I always do it. <laughs> no one can do this the way you do, believe me. <laughs> Jackie, what about your vote? Is it my turn now? Yes, it's yours now. <laughs> well, I voted for number two, too, because uh, number three's got uh, the most expensive pelts I ever heard of. Yeah. And uh, number one doesn't look like a boxer, not with 27 bouts. Uh, he, he hasn't got... Uh, hasn't even raised the, the meat around his eyes yet. So, and number two certainly knows his minks anyway. So that's why I voted for number okay, two. Okay, Kitty, what about your selection? Well, I voted for number one. They always, they always look, Polly and, and High always look for cauliflower ears, and I couldn't find any cauliflower. You got one? Oh, number two? Well, I voted for number one. <laughs> I, got one your vote for I voted for number one also. Number three was weaving uh, like a boxer uh, up front, but the number one has a cut over the right eye, and uh, also, he's been sitting here and yawning all night, and I do the same thing when I price mink. <laughs> <laughs> all right, there you have it. <laughs> they all have to vote for the wrong. We voted the way we did, and if you're voting along at home and playing the game with us, as we hope you are, let's see how right or wrong you and we are, as we discover which one of these gentlemen is the real professional boxer and the mink raiser. So will the real Lamar Clark please stand up? Oh. <laughs> well, it's divided up quite easily there. Thank you, sir. Number one, would you, I'd run number two, rather. Would you tell us who you really are and what you do with your cauliflower ear? <laughs> I'm Chuck Schultz, and I'm a professional model. Oh. <laughs> and uh, number Does three... Does he model Beg pardon? Does he model mink? No, only cauliflower ears. Uh, number three, what about you, sir? My name is Coy Gobble, and I'm a student at Columbia, and I was a uh, football captain last year. <laughs> well, we're clearly we're mighty happy to have had you gentlemen with us. Hope you had as much fun as we did. Checking on the score, we find that there were two incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $500 from Marlboro. On your way out, gentlemen, you'll find one of these nice holiday cartons of Marlboro's waiting for each of you. Uh, good night, sirs. Thank you very much, and good luck. Is your name, please? My name is Beverly Anderson. What is your name, please? My name is Beverly Anderson. What is your name, please? My name is Beverly Anderson. All right, panel, will you follow along with this next affidavit? I, Beverly Anderson, have appeared on this program before. I appeared as one of the two imposters in the same costume I am wearing now. Although I was not the real person, Miss Bergen, Mr. Cooper, who was on that night, Miss Carlyle, and Mr. Gardner all voted for me. Signed, Beverly Anderson. <laughs> now, as I'm sure you've gathered, panel, your problem is to find out which one of these three young ladies is the real Beverly Anderson who appeared on this program before 
dressed exactly as she is now, and she got all four of your votes. Okay, let's start this cross-examination with Kitty Carlisle. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, what's your name? Beverly Anderson. And what were you supposed to be when you were here before? Well, I portrayed Mrs. Mortimer. And what's your maiden name? Jean Simon. So what's your real name? Beverly Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, can you get out of that straight jacket all by yourself? I haven't tried. I don't think so. Number three, when you were on before, did you wear your hair like that? Oh, uh, when I was on before, I wore my hair this way, yes. Exactly the same? Um, well, I didn't have the hat on. Hi, guard. Number one, when you were on uh, before, did you wear the bridal outfit? Yes, I did, hi. And uh, do you recall uh, uh, how at the finish uh, we picked the winner? Do you recall how that was done? Uh, you mean why? Did you no, how that? was it done? You didn't mention that you were the, the, uh, the bride. How was it announced that you were the actual bride? Well, the husband came over to the actual bride. Uh -huh. Number, number two, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, number two, uh, when you uh, were on last time, uh, were you working at a nightclub doing the act, uh, the escape act? No, I wasn't. I was supposed to be. Mm. Polly? Number three, what were you on as an imposter for? Wow. <laughs> what was that again? Uh, how do you ask it? What were you That's on what I want to know. That's why I want to know if you want to have the same uh, well, <laughs> What yes. Before, when I was on the show, yes. what was I being an imposter? Yes. Before, uh, I was posing as Mary Hume, and she organized Tiger Hunt. Oh, I see. Number two, now, when you were on the show before, you lied. Isn't that the truth? Yes, I lied. <laughs> now, you're telling the truth, though, when you said you were lying on the other show. Oh, <laughs> You know, I don't believe her at all. Thank you, Cooper, please. Hey, uh, 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 number three with the tiger hunt. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, Miss Anderson, Beverly Anderson. Yes, that's so, yeah, I remember that. They're, they're called... I called them shikars, but they were... <laughs> what were they? Sh shikars. Sh that's right. You shikars. learned. That yes. was, that's right. That's right. That's right. And you forgot to ask her. Don't tell her. You. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, don't oh. tell her. Uh, were you... Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, 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 what month were you on? What month was I on? Uh, the last time I was on, it was in uh, September. Do you know the exact date? <laughs> The exact date. Wish there were time to find out, but it's time to vote. Oh, right now. Oh, oh, consultation, would you please mark your ballot? Panel. And as usual, select number one, or number two, or number three. Everybody mark. Holly. Have you marked? All set? Yes. Everybody? Okay. For whom did you vote, Holly? Well, I voted for number two because I don't remember number one at all. And uh, uh, number three, I think I voted for somebody else instead of her. <laughs> no, when she was on before, if she was, because I don't think she was. Oh, I thought you, I thought you meant on another show. No. <laughs> I think it's number two. Though. Okay. Jackie, what about your vote? Uh, I voted for number three. Oh, Don. Because uh, I, I think I remember. I remember that. I think I also called them... Chickers, too. <laughs> number three, I'm quite sure. All right, oh. Kitty? I voted for number one. Uh, I may be taken in by the bridal gown, but I don't remember number two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you do remember number one. <laughs> Maybe uh, I only remember the dress. <laughs> Hi, Gardner, your selection. Well, I voted for number one because she, she uh, did explain the payoff on the uh, original appearance of the three brides. And secondly, remember, Bud, there's an old joke that uh, I never forget a face, but in your case, I'll make an exception. Well, maybe I made the exception. <laughs> All right, there you have it on this round now, and we'll see whether we're right, whether we're wrong, as will you, as we discover right now which one of these three charming young ladies really appeared on our program before. So will the real Beverly Anderson please stand up. Number three, number three, number three. No, 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 no. no. Uh, 
I'm sorry she can't applaud you, too, but at the moment she's a little tied Somebody up. Somebody help her. Uh, <laughs> number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you do, please? Yes, I'm Mrs. Richard <clears throat> Lee Otto, and I've never been on this program before, but both my father and my younger sister have. Oh. <laughs> and uh, number three, what about you? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, You're I've frightened by a forgot. tiger. It's all right. <laughs> no, my name is Marion Godwin, and I'm an ex-school teacher from Georgia. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> all right, incidentally, Beverly Anderson, when she was last on our show, was a dancer. I don't know if you remember that. But right now, she's doing very well as a theatrical agent with the Dale Garrick Agency here in New York. From a school teacher to an agent. No, no, from an answer to an agent. She's, oh, oh. she's still hunting tigers. It's yeah. all right. Yeah. <laughs> Checking up here on a listing, we find that uh, Polly was the only one right that time, which means there were three incorrect votes. Oh, we'll never lose that. $250 each for $750 yeah. from Marlboro. Ladies, thank you very much. I expect you've already got it spent. On your way out, stop and pick up a carton of Marlboro's for each of you. Good night and good luck. Thank you. Challenger. Is your name, please? My name is Erna Phillips. What is your name, please? My name is Erna Phillips. What is your name, please? My name is Erna Phillips. Pamela, will you follow along with this affidavit, please? I, Erna Phillips, am a writer for radio and television. <laughs> Currently, I am writing As the World Turns, which appears five times a week on CBS television. Most of my writing, however, has been for radio. To date, I have written more than 25,000 radio scripts. I created and wrote The Guiding Light, Road of Life, Rush to Happiness, Today's Children, The Woman in White, and other well-known radio programs. I am credited with being the inventor of the daytime radio serial, more commonly known as the soap opera. Signed, Erna Phillips. Each one of our challenges tonight will receive one of our <clears throat> Tell-A-Tooth games. If you'd like to play to Tell-A-Tooth at home, I'm sure you can pick up one of these games at your local toy department stores, and I know you'll enjoy them. All right, these three ladies all claim to be Erna Phillips, inventor of the soap opera. Let us begin this questioning with High Gardner. Hi. Number two, uh, what did a fellow named Jesse Crawford have to do with soap opera? He was one of the first organists on soap opera. Uh -huh. Number three, uh, do the names Mike Foster and Dinty Doyle mean anything to you? No. Do they mean anything to you, number two? No. Number one, do they mean anything to you? Uh, beg pardon? Not a thing. Uh, number one, uh, what was known in the early radio days as the Blue Network? That was uh, ABC. Uh, number two, uh, what was the Red Network? That was also ABC. Uh, number three, what was the Green Network? I don't know. Uh-huh. Number three, Holly? And number two, is Martha Fallsbury really going to marry Dr. John? Uh, <laughs> I beg your pardon? It has nothing to do with writing that story. Oh, uh, number three, do you know? No, I don't. Number one? I didn't write that. Uh, n number uh, three, there's uh, a very famous girl, uh, uh, a very famous serial uh, about a girl from a little mining town in the West who is married to a rich and handsome lord. What's the name of that series? Um, Our Gal Sunday. Uh, number two, um, let's see. Uh, why, why are they called soap operas? Because the soap uh, firms were the first ones to endorse this type of uh, advertising. Well, isn't it difficult to talk about cigarettes? Well, you just blew my whole first question. <laughs> what did I do? Uh, why are they called soap operas? I'm sorry. Why also, another thing, uh, why are they all so sad? Oh, they're so sad. Well, they're you taking away of life. Not everybody has great happiness. Oh, oh. Um, uh, no, number three. Uh, was uh, Bud Collier ever in any one of your radio scripts? Yes, I believe he was. Which one was it, Bud? Shall I tell him? The Guiding Light. The Guiding Light. Oh, I thought maybe you were an imposter and weren't going to tell us <laughs> the truth. Um, number one. Uh, oh, that was my other question. Oh, number one, is, is the guiding light also on television now? Yes, it is. Uh, number... Kitty? Number one, how did you happen to invent this form of entertainment? 
Well, uh, I really, uh, it was really from my family that I depicted... All of these stories came from your family? That, no, Painted Dreams was my first uh, ah. serial, and that depicted my family. Number two, uh, do you belong to the Authors League of America? No, I don't. Do you, number three? No, I don't. Number one, do you, what's the, uh, no, I won't ask that question. That's the last time I'm ever going to ask who's the president of the Authors League of America. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, number one, how many hours a day do you have? Her husband is the president of the Authors League of America. Plug, plug. Uh, well, how many hours a day do you work? Oh, I should say about four. Number two, what does 15 Vanderbilt Avenue mean to you? That is the TV station for Columbia. Number three, are you married? No, I'm not. Are you number one? No, I'm not. Are you number two? No, I'm not. <laughs> and so we say goodbye. To... <laughs> And we stop right now for a little voting. Without consulting each other, as usual, please mark your ballots. Voting for number one, number two, or number three. Oh, that you're staring at me. Why? <laughs> okay, Polly, for whom did you vote? Well, this is really sort of a hunch. I, I'm voting for number three. Uh, she did know our gal Sunday, even though she didn't write that serial. I've seen many of these series, and they're, they're very well written. But she has sort of a sweet and sentimental face, and I think you have to have a lot of sentiment to write these things. Yeah, yes, you do. Jackie, what about your vote? Well, I think number one is very sweet and sentimental. <laughs> well, she is. Uh, she cuts her hair like a writer. Like most of the writers I know. The female writers, that is. So I voted for number one. Okay, Kitty? I voted for number three because I think number one is wearing a wedding ring. I don't think number three is, and I, I didn't think it was number two. And how about your selection, hi? Well, I like the answers of number three uh, for the same reasons Jackie was talking about. I was going to vote for number one out of sentimental reasons. We both have the same barber, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we'll find out whether we've been going down the right path or the wrong one and whether the guiding light has really led us to the right to happiness as we discover which one of these three charming ladies is the real inventor of the soap opera. So will the real, Erna Phillips, Please stand up. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much, Anna. Number one, would you tell us who you really are and uh, what barber you go? I mean, uh, what you do? <laughs> My name is Isabel Goodwin. I'm director of children's activities at Ben Tobin's Hollywood Beach Hotel and Golf Club in Hollywood, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> and number two, would you tell us about yourself? I am Bernice Christie, and I'm a fashion sales promotion consultant here in New York. Thank you. See now, uh, that was uh, just only one incorrect vote, Erna. I guess they've all followed your soap operas and know what a good writer you are, as do I. Uh, Thank you very much. However, that means it's only $250 from Marlboro. However, with Christmas season coming along, I expect you can make good use of it. On your way out, will you pick up a card in Marlboro for each of you? Good night. It was a great pleasure having you with us, and good luck. I meant to mention, ask you at the top of the show, how many times have you been with us? Oh, it must be a dozen times, but at least a dozen. I've enjoyed every one of them. I hope there'll be at least a dozen more. Well, I'll give you a good start of two more anyway. You're going to be with us for the next two weeks. Oh, yes. wonderful. And that covers the period of time that you are going to be rehearsing and starring in the Hasty Heart on the CBS show this month. With Don Murray and Barbara Bel Geddes and a lot of very good actors. Thank Pretty you. excited about that, aren't you? Very. Good very. script? Yes, sir. Beautiful well, show. We'll be watching and checking with you each week from now Thank on. Thank you. I guess that's it, panel. Vital statistics are over for the week, and so good night. Good night, Bob. Good night, Bob. This is Bud Collier saying good night from Marlboro and reminding all of you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth is the Mark Woodson, Bill Codman production in association with the CBS Television Network. Wedding Gown by Benson Young Incorporated. Organ music provided by Paul Todman. Miss Perkins Gown by Wilma.